exit stage. Yeah. Right, and so left. I'm assuming Kim won't be here. <laughs> no, we've actually had they quite a few. Where is he from, Rick? Or where does Ken still oh, live? Oh, forgot Towner. Towner? Somewhere up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so what's his dad's you should know then. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that your but area? There's a lot of Moors up there, yeah. Uh, I don't remember. Sorry. Sure Actually, my uh, sister's got a classmate, and that's, I don't even know what his first name is. I always call him Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Alex. That's just you guys just get a copy of it. But I'm gonna request to have that. I'm gonna add it to okay, it when we, we talk about when we ask, ask if we want additions. Instead of amending it, I was like, I'm just gonna ask to add it. So who's on this side? Well, it's only oh, me and who else? It's nine o'clock. I'll call this meeting of the Mercer County Commission to order. Um, first item of business is the reorganization. So I'll turn it over to Samantha to take nominations for chair. This is the first meeting in January, so we will be taking um, a vote on the new chairman. Do I have any nominations at this time? I'll nominate Travis Fry. Do I have any other nominations for chairman at this time? Any more motion or any more nominations for chairman? If not, can I get a motion to cease? I'll make the motion to cease. Motion by Liza. Can I get a second? I can second it. And
And do I have any nominations for vice chair at this time? Nope, I think I'd vote on that. And Travis takes over for okay. vice chair. And we'll vote on that at this time. Well. Liza, how do you Aye. vote? Rick, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Travis? Aye. Jean? Aye. That vote passes. I know Travis takes over. Well, I thought we'd do the vice as well. No. And then Travis takes over. He takes over, over the meeting. He, then he okay. asks. I, I yeah. will send yeah. it back to you. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, is there any uh, nominations for vice chair? I'll nominate Jean Wolf. Okay, Rick nominates Jean Wolf. Is there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Seeing no further nominations, can I get a motion to cast the unanimous ballot and have Jean be the vice chair? A motion to cast the unanimous ballot for Jean to be vice chair. Okay, motion by Jamie. Is there a second? A second. Second by Eliza. Any discussion? Seeing none, Jamie? Aye. Eliza? Aye. Rick? Aye. Jean? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. All right. Uh, moving on to the agenda, um, I'd like to add um, mileage reimbursement rate to other business. Add what? Mileage rates? Uh, oh. Mileage reimbursement rate, yep. Okay. I, I'd like to add landfill land lease. And also, Terry would like to add to adopt the policy and procedure manual after his oath of office. What was the last one you said? To adopt the policy and procedure manual for the Sheriff's Department after the oath of office. Okay, anything else? Now I'll take a motion to uh, accept the agenda as amended. So moved. Motion by Jean. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. We'll give that to Rick. Um, any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Liza? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Uh, approval of the minutes from the December 21st meeting. I'll move to approve as presented. Okay, motion by Jean to approve as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Eliza. Any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? The only discussion I had on there was like, I don't remember the, the, HR, the EM thing and the 911 minutes. Am I off of that now? Is that um, for the board? That that switched. You took road, and then I switched and took that one. Okay. It's on um, page three, Rick. <coughs> Who has uh, emergency management nine one one, Liza? Liza. Oh. Yeah, we made a couple of switches. The switches that were uh, that we made were listed. In the on page three. Yep. Yep. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Liza? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Uh, bills. No change in the chair or the vice chair. Oh, 
I think it's already running a little late. We're going to have a slow vehicle in front of me, and I'm like, I'm not going to pass. No, no, good choice. <laughs> and how was your trip? Pretty good. I, yeah, I had to, you know, leave early to yeah. get there at all. <laughs> but I ended up being almost two weeks gone. That's all right. You deserve it. Interesting working. <laughs> Christmas Day. Oh, weather-wise. Oh, sure. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I wasn't great down there, but we were still, we went, you know, two hours to the Twin Cities and back, and boy, it was none of fun. We just had to do it. There wasn't, yeah, a lot of yeah, movement yeah. around here. <laughs> Some of these be in 22 and some of these be in 23? Yeah. Okay. Caused some issues. As long as you're keeping them straight. I just hadn't seen it before. Yeah, me either. Expired, not expired. Chunky, not expired. It was not expired, but it was yes. sour and chunky. Okay. 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 Okay.
Yeah, it was. Um, okay. Were there any nominations for each of the Yummy. Sides? Yep, Rick yeah. just made a nomination for Travis for chair. That was the only one. All voted aye. Um, uh, no, Liza made a motion. Second was Rick. All voted aye. And then it went back to Travis. Rick. Um, nominated Jean for vice chair. Second motion unanimous ballot. Jamie. Liza seconded. Those are the days. Of the oh, month. just the day of the month. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, so the oh, day okay. of the month. I was like, how are you picking fun numbers? <laughs> just throwing them. Just <coughs> why number twenty nine? <laughs> Today is seven. <laughs> <laughs> Makes so much. But I actually have a thing on the side where I got the twelve months, and then I just enter the month date, and it it auto fails here. And huh. Why are you so fancy? <laughs> Too many years of school. <laughs> That's what education is. Yeah. <coughs> Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> I guess. The receipt actually has the line of sessions. You're good with your phone? It just says. Yeah, it's pretty good. Did it go bad, I wonder? I did a trading at the school yesterday. Oh, I was like, you buy 10 we should read this. Do I need to read this? Do I need to read I thought maybe that's why you put it in the agenda today. Just to charge or something. Any sort of government. It's funny to deal with like one of the dispatchers. <laughs> it's no, I'm 10 years younger than me, and her use of Excel is oh, much better than the majority of us. But I'm like, we didn't use it a lot in school. We used Word for everything. Yeah, right. so there was. Maybe uh, you're going to buy them I know some high school kids are recently in grads. Body work is not enough. How do you not know how to use Excel? I think you do use Excel. Uh, I don't know. We touched very little on it even when we find it. Liza, we even got to buy you deodorant. Body yes. wash is not enough. Right. Get stinky back there otherwise, Jean. <laughs> Deo for the deal. <laughs> well, you shower every month. <laughs> Still, it doesn't help. Okay. <laughs> Those are confined areas. Okay. <laughs> I love looking at those receipts. <laughs> I actually had a college class for my undergrad that half the semester all we did was Excel. That would be, I mean, like, I just don't, I, now I have to use it some, but I don't have a use for it in my life. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> it was, huh? Where are you, Dina? And 
I think they called Beulah too, and Beulah didn't have any on hand, but he was I'm not cold. Time, so. It's not cold enough. Yeah, that's much of an option. No. Which I don't know. Could have waited if you do because that region's no, cold. No, 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 no. That's what I'm cold. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> freezing. So. Oh, but it's quite locally. Uh, you seem to take more off than you turn down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why don't you give us a heads up first? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you want Liza to intervene? I guess they started filming that. Yeah. 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 No thanks for giving me these. That's the first question we asked. Yeah. I warned you. Yeah. Probably so that's going to happen. That's about uh, maybe probably the worst is coming off. Okay. I guess I'd have to look at it. Just before. It's just something that bothered me. Yeah. I was tired as heck. See if it makes any like that. Yeah. I'm sure we'll go down the road. Three days. If you need gas in here in Tech City, you get Or even in Fargo or whatever. Right. I was in state in 2020. Fiscal year 2020. Did you stay here? FC Fuse. What's FC Sam. On this Lewis and Clark Regional Development Council, the front is billed for 2023 for the year, but their letter is dated 2020, and it says there it's their membership assessment for 2022, and it's payable by the beginning of January. So I don't know if it's a current letter, or if they, they didn't update their letter. Yeah, I'm thinking that they didn't update their letter because it's our annual okay. contri contribution. Yeah, because it's dated 2020. This is the one that copy and paste. It copy and paste. Yeah, yeah uh, I can contact them later and send us an updated version. Uh, well, and it, like it says the membership is for 2022, not 2023. But then this page says 2023, yeah. and then yeah. the invoice is 2023. And we can hold it out. But this one is for the next one, okay. So with letter that they sent us. Okay. I can contact them. I don't think it's like our problem. I think it's theirs. Yeah. yeah. For right. Get a new one that's got of. the right mm -hmm. year on it. <coughs> Project.
Rhinestone School. Maybe I've seen that name before. Oh, yeah. Design here, too. Yeah, she worked here a long, long time ago. Hmm. Did you guys want me to hold this one aside then? I mean, it, I feel like Clark it should be probably clarified. Mm -hmm. If there wasn't three incorrect dates on it, it probably right. would look so bad. But <laughs> right. We're not sure what year we're in. Well, it's early. <laughs> it's early in the year. <laughs> they still think they're in 2020. Oh. Yeah. Let's not relive that. <laughs> No. <laughs> We're not changing the date anymore. Just out of curiosity. <laughs>
just increased it, though. Pardon? We just increased it, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't so like, remember what it is. Is it like 20 now or something? Something we should we should right. ask him. Okay. But you can also see why you, you build up a large stockpile before you post them up there. Because here it's eleven. So it was like it's eleven hours seven. worth of time, wasn't it? It's eleven hours. Sure that's what I'm wondering. It's got to be eleven hours, doesn't it? Say labor. Labor. We should ask Andy what they did they charge us per container? In other words, if they did 50 of them, did we charge enough for those 50 to cover this cost? That's what we should make sure that we're getting enough that it shouldn't cost us. Right. Okay. We don't want to lose money. Exactly. If we can break even or make a little bit. Exactly. That portfolio. Does Liza have that line of portfolio? No, I don't. Uh, Jamie does. What's up? Can you look at candy? We know we got a bill to remove refrigerant. And could you check with her, like if they did uh, 10 refrigerators, freezers, or if they did 100 of them, if we collected enough money to pay that bill? Oh, okay. You know, not that. We collected fifty dollars and we got charged a thousand to remove the fridge. I I forget what the amount was. Okay. But to make sure we're charging. Okay. <coughs> Thank Been the first time I've been wrong since 9 30. <laughs> <laughs> so doing, good. Mind, yes. <laughs> doing good. Doing good. I was going to say youth bureau, but I didn't want to be wrong already. <laughs> wrong already, wrong still. Right? <laughs>
Ready? Yep. A motion to approve the bills. Hey, how do? Okay, I make I make a motion to approve the bill as presented. Okay, motion by Jean to approve the bills as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Jamie. Any discussion? What do we do with the one we pulled? If you just want to make a note that you that's that's been pulled, and then uh, we'll get clarification on it. Yeah, the one bill for from Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. We're not approving today, so I don't know. Yeah. How to put that in the motion, but. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Jean. Aye. Jamie. Aye. Liza. Aye. Uh, Rick. Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Next, we got zoning temp uses. Cindy. Okay, all of these are renewals, and I have not had any complaints on any of them, but I did just notice on, on 602 and 603, I had this hall road on both 602 and 603, so I have to change that 602 to the mining and the change of section on there. Mining, you said, right, Cindy? Well, yeah, it's aggregate materials operations. So I will have to fix that one before I have you sign it. But do you just want to go one through each one or okay. yeah just go one by number one number 601 is for trotter construction and that's a scoria pit in the fraction a fraction of the northwest quarter of section 28 township 146 range 88 and like i said i've had no complaints on that one motion to approve motion by gene to approve uh temporary use permit 601 is there a second i'll second second by liza any discussion Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Liza? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That one passes. And 602, like I just said, should be for the aggregate materials operation in the northeast quarter of section 23-144-86, and that is also a renewal, and I haven't had complaints on that either. So 602 should say aggregate materials operation? Yep. Okay. And section, and it should be northeast quarter of 23-144-86. On the uh, agenda, oh, it says northeast. Yeah, it's correct on the agenda. It's okay. Yeah, it's correct on the agenda. <laughs> okay. So it's just uh, a typo you're going to yep. redo. Okay. A motion to approve 602. Motion by Gene to approve 602. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Liza. Any discussion? I'm just recusing myself from both Buffalo Sands permits. Okay. Jamie is going to recuse herself from voting on 602 and 603. Any other discussion? Seeing none, um, Jean? Aye. Liza? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Number 603 is for Buffalo Sands for the Hall Road in the west half of the section 14, 86 and I haven't had any complaints on that either. It's a renewal also. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion by Jean to approve the temporary use 603. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Liza. Any discussion? Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Liza? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Number 604 is also a temporary use permit renewal for Wayne Basons' gravel pit, and that is the one in the southwest quarter of 211688. Motion to approve temporary use permit 604. Motion by Jean to approve temporary permit 604. Is there a second? A second. Second by Jamie. Any discussion? Has he started work on this one yet? or? I, I doubt it. I okay. mean, that was only a couple months ago. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Jean? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Liza? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Number 605 is another renewal um, for North Dakota Propent, and that's for the sand dune gravel mining in the west half of Section 10, Township 144.85. And I haven't had any complaints on that one either. Is this the one along the highway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on the north side of the highway. Motion to approve temporary use permit 605. 
Motion by Jean to approve temporary use permit 605. Is there a second? No second. Second by Jamie. Any discussion? Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Liza? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Number 606 is a temporary use permit um, renewal from Energy Sand Solutions for sand mining. And that's in the south half of section 5, 14485. That's the one out there across the road from Beckles. Okay. Motion to approve temporary use permits number 606. Motion by Jean. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Liza. Any discussion? Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Liza? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Rick? Aye. I'll vote aye. That motion passes. Okay. Any, any other zoning? No. Thanks, um, Cindy. Are, are you, do you have the Madden Haven lots on here or is it somebody else? I didn't have it on there, but I do have um, information. Oh, yeah. I do have the information you got, too. I don't know if you guys can want to run through that real quick. Can we jump to that, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, yep, I think we'll jump okay. to the Man Man Manhaven lot. Uh, there was a gentleman that came in and uh, spoke to me a couple weeks ago. He was interested in purchasing those lots. Um, we haven't been taxing them because we don't have any information regarding them. Um, it used to be a town called Manhaven um, in Mercer County. It's since, I think, been... It's no longer incorporated. Yeah, and right. Um, so, he, this gentleman is interested in purchasing them, but we don't really have any information, and I'll let Cindy kind of go through that. Well, okay, uh, I, I know for, I don't know how long it's been since they haven't been taxed, but they're lots 13 and 14 in Block 2. Um, this book here that I have is from 1985, and they for sure weren't in there then, so it's probably a lot longer than that for all I know. Mm -hmm. um, and the last people that we, sh the last deed that we had was in like 1929, and that was to a bank. So now I do have an email here from Todd to Jen, where he says that um, it needs to be put on for tax sale in order for us to put them back on the tax roll. But my question to that would be is how can we treat it like our tax sales that we're doing for redemptions when they haven't been taxed? I don't, I really don't know. This, this is kind of one of those unique situations where it slipped through the crack sometime in the last 94 years, roughly. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, because it was, well, I don't know when the last time they were taxed, but they are virtually nothing on any of these, and they're like $2.50 a year is what we bring in for yeah. taxes on them. So, my, my question is if you purchase these, how does somebody get to those places? There's no access to them. Right. Yeah, because there's what I could see on Google Earth. There's no like uh, section line trails or any. So, so for reference, uh, Manhaven was south of Pick City. It's on the west side of the. It's on our county side, but it's um, south of the uh, downstream. The yeah, the downstream, the electrical plant, um, and there hasn't been a residence there, and basically since the 50s when the dam was built after the dam was done the town basically got vacated okay yep. right and I, I this that gentleman really really wants these two lots but like you said i don't even know that you can get to them and i think we need some more research done on these because when i had talked to gary emter about it he had said that there would have to be a title search on it and I told that guy that he says well that is what he does but I would think you'd have to get one done by some, uh, an uninterested right. party yeah. <clears throat> Definitely. But, but it should be his cost or I, I don't know but I don't you know this email from Todd saying take it back for a tax sale I don't because under a normal situation if Gene Wolf doesn't pay his taxes then you're able to send him a letter Right, the auditor's office. And I'm referencing office, after, myself for everyone. That's after a, three years, the auditor's office, you know, after you can only go back three years, have three years of taxes, and then at that time, the auditor's office has to send you and all your creditors certified letters telling them that they're going to come back to the county. Right, if but, they don't pay it by October first or right, right. But, but I don't know how we're going to do this one. <laughs> you got no one to send a letter to. And we haven't done it 
forever, so how do you take it back? I don't know, but that, I'm not legal, so. Well, I think we, I wish Todd were here on this one, but I, right. I think we need to just basically table it or uh, postpone it because I mean, we, we need to make sure, not, not that we think we can go ahead with a sale and then all of a sudden Travis Frey says, no, I own those lots. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't record the deed. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can do omitted a property or whatever, I think, maybe, but I, I still don't know. There has to be a title yeah, search. Yeah, we'll have to do, we'll have to get some direction from legal, because, I mean, yeah. this is one of those things. I'm I'm all for getting them on the tax roll, of having somebody want them is great, but we just got to make sure we do it legally and correct. And maybe that it somebody come back with the dam knows more information about it. Well, they wouldn't know why we took it off our tax rolls. I don't. Oh, well, we have that, all the other maybe, lots on maybe there. Maybe they know. It's weird. Is we it, have all the other lots on the. I mean, there's people who own those lots, like right. L Wines and Cindy's On. I mean, all the other lots are accounted, accounted for, for, except those. Okay. Two. Except for those. It's like they just disappeared out of the tax roll. But there are people who own them, other lots out there, but they don't do anything. <laughs> them. Like I said, we don't have any value on them. They're two dollars and fifty cents for taxes. <laughs> Yeah, I think we need to get a little bit more direction from our legal. Is it pu public information who's requesting to buy them or not? Uh, Odin Anderson yeah, from Pick City. And yeah. he was just requesting it to be on the agenda. He couldn't be here today, but so that way we could maybe start the discussion. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we knew that it would probably take some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll have to talk to Todd and I could reach out to one of my contacts at the course, see if they have any information but I but I mean I where these it. where these lots are it's in such a weird I mean it's in the middle so it's not like it would have been underwater no that no was it's never not underwater. underwater no not these two lots aren't maybe those ones that Cindy's on on oh it's along the along the, um, I concur with Travis. We have no problem selling them. We just got to make sure we do it properly. Right. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Well, I guess we'll probably just put it on the next agenda and get some clarification from Todd. I mean, Todd's direction was um, similar to a tax sale, but we just have to know how that mechanism works when when there's no deed on file or no back taxes because we weren't taxing. Um, let's go to the mileage reimbursement rate. Um, the IRS just uh, updated uh, mileage reimbursement rates uh, for fiscal year 2023. Um, IRS is 65 and a half cents. Our system doesn't do half cents. Um, so typically we round up to the nearest penny, which in this case would be 66 cents. What is our policy or um, state right now uh, usually the state adopts um, no what's that our Mercer County what do we reimburse right now 63 okay and we did that in July because there was a mid-year bump mm -hmm. in 22 so we need a motion to change it to 66 yes right I'll make a motion to change our mileage to 66 cents Okay, motion by Jean to increase our mileage reimbursement rate to 66 cents. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Rick. Any discussion? Seeing none, Jean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Liza? Aye. Jamie? Aye. How about I? That motion passes. So is that effective? Act as of effective. Today? Or is uh, that the January first? one. Okay. Okay. Um, well, Candy's in here. We could talk about the landfill land lease. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> business. 
So, and he's got one one year left on his lease. It was a three year lease for the um, alfalfa field behind the landfill. And so I don't know how you guys want me. He found somebody that would do it this year, or yeah, for 2023, somebody that will do this. But the only thing is, is he's on the lease, so he's still liable. Mm -hmm. So we would, if you guys wanted to do that, we would have to change it and put some other guy on it for the other year, or and put it up on bids again. I don't. Can we can we just terminate his lease since he said he's not going to? This is he simply. I, I guess I'd have to look at the lease. This so, is how, how this got written. Yeah. So when Candy reached out to me yesterday to research the information, I found the letter that we had sent out to him, and I found a copy of the lease. But I'm going to have to dig deeper to find the sign, his signed copy of the lease, because I looked in all the. Uh, I did it all day. This is. Obvious places, it didn't come up with anything. <laughs> so, well, we'd need the, the document that he actually signed. Yeah, and I don't have one, I can probably get one from him because but it goes to one, and see, he pays it on the 15th of um, January. Yep, so I'm a lot, I'm be sending him out an invoice still this year. Yeah, so since it my only thing is just thinking out loud is since he notified the county now officially and said he simply doesn't want to lease it anymore well then him not making a he will just not make the payment rather than us going after him for the payment i would say we just release it since re I can't even say the word re 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 release. release it again, <laughs> and uh, because there's plenty of time, it's not like it's uh, something. It's in the not players. like it's July one; it's right. yeah. January. <clears throat> so yeah. I think we wouldn't have a problem leasing it again. That, but mm -hmm. I think we'd need Todd's opinion on how to do that. This is a payment for 2023's year, not 22. Right, because his, yep. his lease will go until December 31st okay. of 2023. Um, and there is a section in here if the lease is terminated by the landlord, oh, by That's the tenant. Um, so, I mean, yeah, of course, we probably want to get this looked at by Todd, and also I'll do yeah, some more research on. Does it state in there that the landlord can terminate the lease? Yes, uh, yes. number yes. C. Yeah. Yeah. The that this is on has got the topsoil that we need, topsoil to put on capping ground. Oh, well. That is a thing that. We can terminate that lease to get that dirt out of there. Yeah. Well, then we can, we can just terminate the lease. Yeah, I guess the direction we would need is uh, it's almost like a sublease if he's got somebody lined up or if we'd have to re-advertise. That's my only question is if we have to re-advertise. I would, that I would think we'd need to. Yeah. yeah. It would have to go out on bids for the 2023. Correct. Just to hand it to somebody else. Isn't probably fair either. I don't know. Yeah, right. that, that and that's that's my only question. Is yeah. if we can sublease it or if it needs to go back. Yeah. So we need the official well, termination, and then we'll re advertise. Re that's what our assumption is, but we'll have to verify with Todd. Yeah. But right. I don't see it. What what I other? Of course Adrian, we would. Adrian must have his copy. I never got. I wish Todd would walk in right now, but he's not. <laughs> and we could make this probably quick and short. Well, and if we do, do you want me to run over and talk to him? If he's here. Oh, I can go investigate. Well, I think it yeah. can be looked at. We can table that until yeah. later in the meeting. Uh, of course, Charlie hasn't given you the new calendar. Pardon? I was just yeah. looking at the calendar because <laughs> it's be moved ahead a day. Did you say it was through the 15th? Or that's the invoice, Steve? Yeah, well, he has day. until the 31st to pay it, yeah. of January okay. to pay it. So we have one more meeting in January. Yeah. 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 Okay. The January, it will be January 18th will be the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Postpone it until yeah. mm -hmm. the next meeting. Advice, and then the next meeting. if Todd tells us that we just have to re-advertise it, then we'll re-advertise it and it'll be for 
23, and then I wonder if we would just throw in the three year after that. So, yeah, either, either do for three years or. Yeah. Right. So my question would be, do we start a new three year or do we do a one year plus a three year? Three year. <clears throat> but I don't think it really matters. I don't think so either. I think we could just start the three year whenever. Yeah. That would be fine because it'd be a whole new leaseholder. So. Yeah. And it sounds like there's interest, so that's always a good thing. I'll, I'll call Adrian and see if he happens to have a, a copy of that. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and, and the next time we do it, make sure we get a copy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, we're looking in there, too, and I can't find any, can't find a folder in Lanto. Okay. To see where. Okay, we'll add it to the next agenda and get more information. Any, uh, anything else with uh, Landfill while you're here? Uh, not really. I guess I have Butler coming to um, do look at the compactor. I got a, we have a leak and there's plates on there that are really heavy and they kind of to use a boom or whatever to tear we got to tear the whole side off of the thing mm -hmm. and we don't have the equipment or the tools to do any of it so okay mm -hmm. and hopefully it's not going to be a catastrophic anything by the time it's done um we had a question when we were going through the bills um gene was wondering on when we took out the refrigerant yep. on did we collect enough to pay the bill that we had to pay for all that removal? Well, actually that bill was for two, two different times that they were there. And um, I was kind of trying to do it. They did over a hundred units the last time they were there. And I'm not sure how many they did the time before, but. Okay. I'll have to do some more math on that, but that all went up this year or now. And 23 it's going up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it was because between labor and trip charge and all that stuff, it was just under two grand, and I don't know if we would have collected enough well, to offset that bill. Well, see, well, a hundred a hundred times twenty is two grand. Okay, so we're right. really close. So yeah, and, and that's really hard to get anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> right, and this was two times. This. this was two times. So we shouldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, our only, the only concern I had was not that they came out in dot and extracted the refrigerate a refrigerant from 10 units and we charged ten dollars a piece for people to bring them out and we get a two thousand dollar bill well that's not covering the cost of the removing the refrigerant so I just want to make sure we're collecting enough from the person who brings the re, uh, appliance out to cover the cost of removing it yeah well you we follow are me? charging 20 okay and now we're at 25. okay and then also with that which um well the refrigerators they just go in the steel pile but all the air conditioners and that when they suck the freon off we tear them down and that's where the when i haul the stuff to bismarck the radiators and all the copper and all of that stuff on there that's where that that's just that special metals so mm -hmm. we're getting deal extra that I in Bismarck. addition to what so we're charging. So we do get money out of that yeah, also. We're typically you don't putting work bring them in until you have a pile of them, like a hundred of them or so anyhow. Well, no, we tried to keep up on it because I didn't, we had a hundred of them sitting there right before winter and then for snow removal and everything, it takes up a lot of space and fridges do. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're just making sure that we're covering yeah, the expenses. Yeah, I need to look at that a little bit more when they come here and see do yes. more math on it but but with you know because we get quite a bit for those fins and stuff and the copper yeah <clears throat> and we just we tear them apart and just hang on to all that stuff and we prepare it so we get more money for it but okay yeah you do a really that's nice a lot job of, of taking care of that part, yeah. yeah yeah and then that's the other thing i guess the um <clears throat> gary finally decided he was going to give me 50 bucks a ton for the to come bail at the landfill and I said, no, I'm waiting until spring. I want the price to go up. Maybe diesel fuel will go down. He goes, what do you want? I said, I want 60. And then he goes, well, you want to meet halfway in the middle? How about 55? I said, no, I said 60. Sounds like a really good number to me. <laughs> I said, 60 is better than 65. And he finally agreed to it. So they're going to bail us and we're going to get 60 bucks ton for it. Nice. Cool. Good job. That's <laughs> really good candy. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we've been going around for years, us too. So. <laughs> 
So there'll be a check on that eventually here. We got a good, pretty good pile. They took almost three loads out of um, <coughs> out of Beulah, so I think I probably got four. Okay. Maybe nice. more. Yeah. Because it's pushed in there. Well, it's so not taking up room and we're getting money for it. That's a great deal. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll take it. I do have some other metals to take down to Bismarck, but it'll be a good. Okay. Before I take them. No then platinum. Or, huh? No platinum or gold or no. silver. <laughs> so copper's good though. This is a and say copper. Yeah. Which is an in and of our paperwork that when stallion comes or whatever, we've been charging two hundred dollars a box. And I talked to the guy at the end of the month, and I said, well, our rates are going up for everybody else. So I said, I'm raising yours, too. I said, it's going to be 50 bucks more. So it's going to be 250 bucks a box. And on an average, they have, uh, on an average, they have about a ton and a half to two ton per box is what's on them trucks. So, so that's going to be a little bit extra. I figured it was fair to, that they should have to go up to if everybody else did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And other than that, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else. I guess I got the new furnace. Still haven't gotten the bill. Okay. And it works great. Good. So. Other than that, I don't think I have anything. Okay. Sounds good. Well, Perfect. you answered a lot Thank of the questions Candy. we had. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. All right. Thank you, Candy. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 10 o'clock. Oh, he must be coming in. Turnus clan. You didn't deputize them all, did you? Didn't know you had this many friends and family, Terry. <laughs> Terry this is probably all of them, huh? <laughs> Terry, we're questioning how many are left-handed because we've been watching. And there's a lot of you that are left-handed. <laughs> swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of North Dakota and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Mercer County Sheriff according to the best of my ability, so help me God. All right. Thank you. We'll have you sign that and we'll get order on.
for, for the host and then. Yeah, now I gotta. Now I have to address you as sheriff and not all the other adjectives I use. <laughs> that is my first order of business is to uh, uh, ask you guys to consider to sign the chairman and the rest of the commission my policy and my manual for the chair's department. All right, is there a motion to approve the policy and procedure manual um, for the sheriff's department? I so move. Motion by Rick, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Gene. But I want to read it. Did I have it before? We do. We do have. We do have some uh, minor changes, and we'll make them available. Okay. Nothing is substantial. Probably. I guess. Probably. We don't disagree. Right? Because we don't, don't disagree. I'm not saying I. Okay. I just don't want to make anything mucky. <laughs> right. Um, due to um, potential or perceived conflicts, um, Liza and Jamie will recuse themselves from from the vote. Um, but we do have a motion by Rick, seconded by Gene, uh, to adopt a policy and procedure manual. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, Rick? Aye. Gene? Aye. All vote aye. That motion passes. So what's today, the 4th? Thanks, Terry. Thanks for everybody coming Thank you, everybody. in. If if you didn't sign in, could you sign in uh, on I your way out? I think there's a couple that snuck in. So. Okay. All right. Go to the state's attorney's office. There's candy for the kids. <laughs> I'm trying to think if we should um, probably take a little. Sure. Recess. Yeah. Um, we can do that when we get back because I don't think anybody's going to hear from Oh, true. Yeah. I got you, got you. Okay. We'll take a recess and come back at 10.15. Finally get there, huh? Yeah. Oh, I got to be 66 in eight months. I was 66 in four months. Is it still going to be there when we're? Pardon? I said, is it still going to be available when we get that age? Oh, it'll be there, but. I married a farmer. There is no retirement. It's called equity. Sure. <laughs> All right. I got a feeling they're going to move the full retirement up eventually again. Right now it's about 67, I think. It's a moving target, so. People aren't living that long, so I don't know how they can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just about me. Football game? Or, uh, Part of it. it. Just uh, when we were driving and text like, is our internet done? The, uh, the game's not updated anymore. And we got home. And it's crazy because it wasn't even a hard hit. It was no. just the right hit that caused the yeah. short circuit. It's crazy. I'm just. Do, do we, what is it? Is it still. There, what is this current? Still ventilated. They're trying to get him to breathe on his own. Is what I read last. I saw night. last evening. Yeah, that's what I read last. Last. Well, I guess it was like midnight. I guess when I read it. He said some improvement in his oxygen levels, but yeah, he's still ventilated. If there is any good in it, is I was just happy it wasn't like a flagrant hit by someone on right. blind side hit. Yeah. That's what was clean as you could get. It was. <laughs> well, and, and honestly, like he stopped. And the guy hit him. It's not like I mean, it was. It was as clean a yeah, tackle as you could get. Yeah, yeah. But when you rewatch and you like, you you do see the impaler. Yeah, like, his shoulder. The other guy's shoulder was right. dead center. Yeah. Right. And then even they were down. He stood up. Of, but you know, if, if they don't do a full like cardiac physical, that's where these kids drop dead on the the field too, because 
most people don't think of a 24-year-old having cardiac issues. Well, he's probably had this short circuit his whole life, but you don't exactly. notice it. I, I, and, I highly doubt that the actual cause. And even when we do an EKG, it's a six-second period of time. Like that, that beat could have been on the eighth second, and you wouldn't catch it. <coughs> so. And realistically, yeah. unless you do a 30-day like event monitor, you even a 48-hour Holter, you're not going to see sometimes those are really. Well, I got a family member that has. Is it called Long QT? Long QT, yep. And uh, the daughter went to do some study, and she had it. Mm -hmm. And they went, "This is hereditary. Yep. Either your mom or your dad has this." So. They went in and got checked, and they said, oh, yeah, you're it, no doubt. And it's like every whatever, six feet, it just flat lines. And yeah. even most, like, if you find a, like a baby with a murmur and you do an echo and they've got a bicuspid valve versus a tricuspid, that's genetic too. So one of, one of the parents likely has it or a grandparent, and then it just comes down the line. So. Yeah, and that's, and that, well, and like with him, this person, he never knew it. No, most people don't. That's the Until he, they said, you got to get tested. Well, of course, then they want to do all kinds of stuff. He said, no. <laughs> well, that's how the AEDs kind of got to this area because of Michelle Tipton's son when he passed away from long QT. That's how we, she got started with that whole program and is getting AEDs in the area for stuff like that. Liza coming back? I think so. <laughs> Want to start with Ellie? I would text her, but her phone is right there. Yeah, yeah. and you left her cold, so <laughs> she didn't skip town. <laughs> Probably got her keys in her wallet or whatever. So. All right, I'll call the meeting back to order. Um, road issues, um, I think most people are aware of Ken's situation. Um, Charlie texted me this morning and said he had something come up so he wasn't going to be here um I, I don't see it was on the agenda but um cindy just reminded me that there was a couple people in the road department that had planned on taking vacation around christmas and they're over their threshold do you know about that sam or? yeah so yes it was brought up to us and or brought to me ken had asked me about it christmas eve and I mean, when it states in the policy that once you go over a certain amount of hours, you lose it. He did say that in the past, um, I guess the auditor allowed him to roll it over and use it the week of the, fir the first week of January. Um, but also there was an, another situation where there was an employee from another department who had went before the board and it was denied that she could use her vacation because of, I, I believe somebody was sick in her office, so she wasn't able to use it to the last week of, or the last few weeks of December. So I gave Ken what was stated in the policy manual. Um, I asked him if he wanted me to put it on the agenda. He never reached back to me. I spoke to a couple of the other commissioners. I think we were all kind of on the same, same board that we were gonna send it to the policy committee and have them discuss it, which the policy committee is um been discussing meeting and i think what did you guys come up with the january 12th 12th so far yeah okay and they'll be discussing that so the policy so will review it and then give us yep. kind of a direction that they see fit so did they not get to use their vacation because of the weather and having to work or they, yeah they said that they had scheduled um time off and then had to come in obviously because for the, the weather for yeah the weather. Okay. so and some of them had requested it way back in okay. march of one was in March, year, yeah, so. yeah. two in, in uh, November. Yeah. I guess what I did a little work on it. Uh, 2016 was the zero policy was the, you know, the no, the policy did not carry it over was in place. 2018 is when they allowed uh, one person to do it. I didn't get the date for when the other department, but both of them occurred after the 2016 <coughs> time frame. So, I mean, they did it one way one time and one way the other time. and. That's why I asked Jean there. She was had the, yeah. the policy uh, portfolio to take it and you know and give us in the right direction. We can go with something. 
Um, so what are they allowed to carry over? I guess 240 like, hours. 240? Mm -hmm. And what's the vacation schedule a year? Uh, they have up until January 31st to use their vacation. And then, or uh, sorry, December 31st. December 31st. And then January 1st. It and they accru accrue their start. hours monthly. So every pay paycheck, period. every pay period? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, every pay period yeah. you accrue hours. So on de by December 1st, or whatever date you want to use, um, you do not have to carry 240 hours. So I, I'm, I'm, I, as a commissioner, I'm going to be very, it's going to be very hard to convince me to allow people to carry uh, hours over into the next year because you can use those hours throughout the year. You don't have to have 240 hours. And even when I was an employee, we had a, had situations where people had more hours than allowed than were allowed to be carried over, and they just you just lost them. So, and I know it might sound cold-hearted, but it I would call it poor planning on your part that you didn't use your hours. Then there's the other argument or uh, statement I could make is apparently you earn too many hours. So if you can't use them by the end of the year, maybe we have to review that. But in these situations, were any of those employees denied vacation earlier in the year because said like other employees were off? Obviously, we can't have the whole department off at one time. So mm -hmm. were they like denied vacations throughout the year to attempt to use those hours because others were? I don't know. On I know vacation? that one of the employees. This is the second time that this has happened to him. So I mean. In my, uh, my opinion, I guess you're kind of rolling the dice, especially if you work on the road department and right. you wait until December to use your vacation. And then another thing that I told Ken is it's hard for me to justify when there were people that lost a lot of hours because they didn't have enough vacation to cover the closures that happened due to the weather too. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, if, I yeah mean, I'm just you can't have the, the whole department off at yeah. one time. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well. If the policy committee is meeting before our next meeting, then we could get some direction or a recommendation from the policy committee. And that's kind of part of the reason for the policy committee is to try to keep things equal or equitable. Yeah. It's hard to be equal, but And I did get a equitable. chance to talk to the chair and, you know, he did have a lot of insight on how the policy was uh, changed and why it was changed the way it was. Um, you know, there was a lot of concern over liability due to overtime, um, you know, being, being costly and then also payout if somebody were to retire, um, that being costly as well. But then they had brought a lot of information to the commissioners and it took some time to even come up to what, with what they did, but it seemed like they presented it and then it all was, nobody could decide. So it just went to nothing pretty much. So it was like all, all or nothing. So mm. that's kind of how they came up with the, with the current policy. Yeah, and 240 so. hours is pretty typical. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, yeah. I mean, not just government, but private industry yeah. across the board, 240 is a, it's a very typical right. cap. And that's kind of went with inclement weather too. They had lots of ideas that they presented, but they were shot down. So. Okay. One, one other issue with that, being that we're on it too, too, is that um, the policy committee hasn't, I was informed they hadn't met in almost two years. And something I would like to see is meet at least quarterly or something and look at things and adjust them or whatever and at least have some plan going forward rather than uh, not doing anything. I think two years is a little bit of a stretch, but I don't know if they met in 22. Because uh, I know there was a couple... Yeah, we met two years ago. And it sounds like uh, if there's a concern that arises, then that's when they reach out and try to schedule a meeting. So yeah, mm -hmm. no one's contacted me about a, any concerns. So until now. Okay. 
Um, on road issues, I know I addressed Rick, and maybe Rick, you didn't get a chance to visit with the road department. I had quite a few complaints from citizens about county roads not being cleared yet from the before Christmas storm, mainly like secondary roads. I don't know if you got a chance to address that because one of them was the airport road, and so that's a major concern for medical to be able to get out there for flights. But obviously, I know Ken has issues. Or I heard there was some equipment issues too during those storms, but I, I haven't had that verified. I heard but. that. Okay, any other road issues or concerns? Just tried to give them a little grace because it's been a lot, but yeah. we're two weeks later now and roads still haven't been opened, so. I was planning on stopping there. But, but then he was gone, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I think we can start the treasurer's report. <laughs> Morning, Don. Morning. <laughs> the treasurer's course is my usual. I hand it out. You guys let me know if you have any questions or if you. I have none. If you look on the second page, we are now in the positive for the end of the year, but keep in mind that the reason we're in the positive is probably because of the 2023 money that's already coming. From the taxes, right? Yeah. Do we ever distinguish what payments in December or for which year? Or? Um, that's their office. I believe they have to keep track of them because yeah. I think when they get audited, they have to know what came out of what, you know. Mm -hmm. But as far as what's getting paid out of what money. Well, I like the total yeah. at the bottom. Right. <laughs> it always looks good in yeah. mm -hmm. December, end of December. Yeah. It always looks good in December. And then people have until what, 15th of February for the discount, and then? March 1st for the first half. Okay. And we've got, we've already gotten. I would say add me to that okay. email list and I think it's a good thing um, to have you come in just to show us where we're at on receivables and where we're sitting. I mean, okay. I'm okay with that. this information is not, yeah, no, I mean, maybe it's, me yeah, just yeah. maybe I'll have that. Okay. I can Thank you, Don. Yep. Before. <laughs> yeah. It was just a click and to add somebody. Yeah, it's no big deal. <laughs> It's always nice to have a little ahead of time, so yep. get a chance. Have we have we gotten any, um, or did we get our Prairie Dog money? I'm trying to remember. No, we haven't. Okay. Not yet. No, I was just thinking about that this morning. Um, we should be seeing it this month. Market, but. Yeah. <laughs> They're anticipating this month. When that is, I don't know. <laughs> right. Soon. <laughs> just say soon. Yep. You'll be seeing it I soon. I did get the, um, the thing from Nicole that she sends out every month that tells us what we're getting for funds, but I haven't really looked that closely at it. It goes beyond that list. So. Okay. okay. Well, was there an anticipated number? I, I have looked through so many reports, but. Yeah, it went, I believe it went up from 1.9 that we were originally um, sent to 2.2 maybe. I know it went up. I thought it went up. Um, so. Yeah, because there was one I saw that was 2.2 and then there's another one that was like 2.48. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. <laughs> so we wouldn't take no, it. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no. But I don't know if that was. 
if that was prairie dog or if that was something road related like i said i've looked through so many right. um numbers that i mean i'm not gonna no nah, it's okay yeah. <laughs> There better not be any 2.48 road numbers. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. um, did anybody find out from Ken if he had got that RFP submitted to the state? I haven't talked to him. Haven't talked no. To him. Okay. RFP for the uh, for the County 17 bridge east of uh, Sap. I one of those not. things where Charlie had to stay out of it right, because it's it back no. no. I know that that the last meeting before that I had Rachel was <coughs> reaching out to me on you know who are now our official newspaper and stuff was to to get that submitted. So I don't know. If that okay. Well, done. we submit it to the DOT and then the DOT advertises. Oh, they advertise it. Okay, maybe so. I didn't know if we had to also put it in our paper. It goes in the official paper, but I don't know if that's through us or if DOT okay. submits it. Okay. I'll ask them. I wouldn't receive it, but I could have seen it in the actual paper. And maybe that's something Elroy or Rachel can look at in Ken's absence if he's going to yeah. yeah. take a little leave. Yeah. I think we have a little time, but I, the sooner the better, because then we can select and. Yeah, I'll send a Rachel an email after our meeting and see okay. if she can give us an update and then forward it to you guys. Thank you. Sounds good. Any other questions for Don? I we kind of did a little tangent there. <laughs> <laughs> she graciously let us do that. Um, I don't have any other questions. I guess we'll just anxiously await um, money from from the state. Sounds good. Thanks, Don. You're welcome. All right. Well, let's do uh, portfolio updates. Um, I usually start at one of the ends. And Wayne was always upset if I picked on him first. <laughs> Jamie, you want to start? No. <laughs> uh, Candy kind of gave her update. Um, <coughs> talked to Jim yesterday morning, but he's gone with some family stuff to. Um, nothing crazy right now in his department there may be something to come but we're kind of waiting it out for right now and um buster langowski was out of the office when i tried to reach out to him and i think that's about it no other meetings since then okay Liza. i don't really have much either because of the snow and me being on vacation i didn't get a chance to talk with anybody really um, and my meetings are like next week I have a couple for a meeting and then the week after I'm supposed to but I just wanted to let you guys all know that I will not be at the commission meeting the next coming up commission meeting I will be out okay. um, as far as my portfolios uh, planning and zoning hasn't met for a couple months because every time we have a meeting there's a storm um, but hopefully on the 19th um, we can meet um, Lewis and Clark, they had their annual banquet last Thursday. I attended that. Um, they're doing pretty well. As you saw, they have an annual dues um, that we pay based on a mill levy. Um, but Lewis and Clark is kind of a, for people that don't know, um, they do a revolving loan fund similar to what the state does. Um, they've branched out into um, several things here recently um, this last year they were actually getting into the property management business um, um, uh, Lutheran Social Services over probably a five to ten year period um, they built or took over a lot of um, rental housing throughout the western half of the state um, so um, Lutheran Social Services was kind of getting out of that and uh, Lewis and Clark was taking over a lot of their properties so that's um, one of the one of their other revenue sources to help um, 
do low interest loans or grant funding and they help um, communities and other um, public entities um, do financing um, something similar to like um, the job development authorities around the area they'll do what they call a pace buy down where they essentially help pay down interest on loans through Bank of North Dakota um, but that's kind of um, what Lewis and Clark does um, so they're they're sitting pretty good they've um, they're eager and ready to start again in 23 and um, I'm trying to think of the other portfolios I have uh, library doesn't meet till February and um, uh, Vision West they'll meet um, in February they have a meeting in um, Stanley later this month I don't think I'll be able to attend I think that's the 19th um, they kind of have an annual meeting there and then um, they meet bi-monthly um, video chat and then the other months they they usually pick a city within the western half of the state and do their meetings um, coal conversion um, they kind of meet as necessary I don't know if have they submitted dues to us yet I don't we're <coughs> seeing that go through the bills yet I haven't seen it. but um, coal conversion counties they'll they have a, a list of um, what they ask from all the different entities within those coal conversion counties so we should be getting uh, an invoice for dues um, for them as well and I think that's main updates I have right now Rick oh uh, for the sheriff's department um, Terry went through his reorganization thing we are uh, Gene and I are invited to uh, along with him and Ken won't be there but we were to uh, sit, meet with uh, the CEOs of of uh, the mine the powerhouses they want to have a meeting on Friday uh, morning about uh, getting the central people in and out how, how they how we want to see it and how they want to see it I uh, obviously I worked with Carmen with the 911 EM position thing and that's changing again in my portfolio so but uh, uh, fair board we uh, we haven't had a meeting in January the West Central Human Resources I uh, was home uh, buried in snow so I didn't I don't know if they had the meeting or not I don't know if they and I did get a Sam sent me an email on the schedule for up and coming here so I can get to those uh, veteran services I stopped and talked <coughs> with him and he saw he had no issues or problems and things were going okay there I talked with the recorder and had the same reports there too but I mean I will talk with her again I will spend a little more time with her but uh, the social services one I haven't uh, touched I got to get a schedule on that one too there's the social service board and the West Central Human Resources that all falls under the same is that under the same yeah. one okay mm -hmm. that uh, so there was uh, those where I was at was um, but the main ones that I spent most time was with the Carmen with the 911 and Terry with the, the program and we're going to discuss that anyway so that's that's where I'm at with my portfolios what's the date of the fair do you have a date the fair that? for 2023 is July 13 14 15 and 16 I guess you could say we've been working on uh, we've got a lot of entertainment like I think I brought that up the last time we got a lot of the entertainment is in place we got still uh, some work to do there but it's an ongoing thing advertising at this point getting that ready looking for grants and things for you know financing is always an ongoing field too which will people don't understand is that uh, fair board gets a mill from the county but that is for grounds and um, the static events only doesn't pertain anything to the entertainment side or any of the other things that go along in the fair board and uh, 
So I mean, we need to be financially in the black. So we're, that's why we're working on that uh, always to keep uh, that side of the coin uh, in operation too. And we don't use the money from the county for the entertainment at all. So that that's why gate admission the gate is admission. so important, right? Yeah. You know the beer garden funds, uh, food vendor funds, all those things that fall into those uh, those income side. Is what we use to keep it operating. Well, we do make a little money. People uh, normally, in the past number of years, we've always made a little money off the carnival too. I mean, we it's a complicated process, but uh, we do get a little bit out of it too. I mean, they they show up and they have their own fees and everything. They handle all that themselves. But we are guaranteed a gate for them. Uh, we have to uh, to get the contract. And we've always exceeded it in the last 20 years, so we've uh, mm -hmm. we've always made a few bucks. Yeah, so you guarantee, but then you share in above the guarantee. Above the guarantee. Yeah. Correct. So if the if the carnival does well, that helps you. If it if it doesn't, then that well, takes away. But the guarantee has gone down. I mean, we used to be 30,000, and now it's uh, gone down. If, COVID days, it went down to 15, and now we're at about about 20. So I mean, we've we've exceeded that. Uh, the last two years, we've set uh, income records for the carnival. So, okay. gate fees went up, of course, a little bit. Not the gate fees, but they they charge a little more too. But it does did help on you know we've done well that way. Okay, Gene. Uh, road department. I don't have anything. MacAd. When do they meet? 26. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, clerk of court, and we'll see what happens at the legislative session this year. It sounds like there might be some changes coming up. Uh, state's attorney, everything must be going fine there. Policy committee will meet on the 12th, and the weed board is on, I think, about the 12th also, evening of the 12th. And that's all I have. You reminded me of one thing. Um, uh, the coalition of cities, kind of Beaver Brigham, has been kind of spearheading that. They met um, right before Christmas. But the one thing I brought up there, um, Gene, when you mentioned the legislation, um, one thing that we'll have to pay attention to and possibly address is what the state decides to do with the retirement program, uh, the PERS retirement. That's going to have a drastic effect on trying to get new employees trying to retain depending on what they do with it um, so if they one discussion topic was that new employees wouldn't be allowed to add into the uh, defined contribution so we'd have to look at um, a 457b plan which is the public sector's equivalent to a 401k but just something to pay attention to that might be some changes that might have to go through the county the policy committee you know the whole gamut so um we'll, well we're paying attention to it so is the association of counties so i think that if we're on the lines of purse too that we should probably start any sort of discussion if it because i know that there's been talk about switching the sheriff's department over to purse so we might want to do that sooner than later that if we that. think we're going to do that so all right uh, moving on, 911 EM position. I see Carmen's here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Um, I know we've had a lot of discussion on it. Um, do we have any clear direction to kind of assist us? Since we've had so many closures and holidays and I had year-end deadlines, I have no updates, honestly, for these, for this. So if Carmen's got something. I do have an update. Okay. okay. After talking to Terry and seeing how he's reorganized his office, and I feel really good that he will be able to absorb that 9-1 side. But because we got a budget, I would like to ask the commission to keep the EM. And then we can look at what we want to do with it next budget period. But for right now, I want to keep it and then train with uh, the sheriff's office and get the 9-1 up and running. You know, everything's set in there. And that's what I'm asking. The 911 will go to the sheriff's office. Yep. And the EM will. will 
I'll, I'll keep it and then we can look at it. I hear there's some interest, I don't know, something going on with the HR. Well, then let's look at it. Next budget period. Not in the middle of a budget like this. <clears throat> you want to keep the emergency manager with the auditor duties? Yep. Saying that we look at it next, next budget period, along with the HR, because there seems to be a lot of concern about that. Mm -hmm. And that will give us time. Okay. I just want to go right up front with this one. Um, you won't receive two salaries, one for EM no, and one for auditor. And, okay. No. no. <laughs> it's gotten us in a pickle in a couple areas, so, mm -hmm. okay. I just want to see how we're going to budget for this 911 thing. That's, that's the one that concerns me because they receive funds they do separately and so funds, right? right and Terry is aware of that and he's got that budget but he also knows they don't receive a penny until I vacate the office but then there's also yeah and then we have Oliver County and we want to make sure that we oh yeah and I've already <clears throat> discussed this with Oliver I met with them last week mm -hmm. they're okay they're okay with it okay so Terry I guess just to make it publicly um, he is aware that he has to keep track of that 911 money separately Absolutely. okay yeah. and the, if he does combine it with a dispatcher or however he decides to do that with another position we'll just have to do it like we already do with he, he actually yeah we'll have to pay okay. their half that their salary out of the general fund and half their salary out of the yeah. 911 yeah. okay if we could get something to show us how that's going to affect yep. everything. And I mean, nothing changes until Carmen yep. moves. Yep. But what I'm saying Absolutely. is we we as a board need to kind of know what exactly is going to happen yeah. when that drop dead date is. Absolutely has to abide by. Mm -hmm. and, and I know a lot of our discussion kind of hinged on when Terry was going to make Right. You know, right. he right. took yeah. over. And he couldn't really do that. Too. Yeah, it's right. it, so it's not that we're not trying to proceed. It's just that there's certain yeah. steps, certain timing, and right. And I think I've said it numerous times. We just want to do it right the first time. And yeah. not to say that something won't change, but you know, we want to be seamless as possible. Yeah, and I'm definitely open okay. to discussion. Okay, now statutorily. Is our auditor able to also assume the EM? I guess I don't, I don't know either way. I know the auditor has a lot of authority, but uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I just want to make sure that all of a sudden we're told, nope, they can't, they can't. That has no, to be I haven't hmm. found anything under a different can't. office. Okay. I mean, I'm okay and with like it. I, I say, just I want it, but I want us to discuss it. I want us right. to look at it, the funds, and that way we got time. And also the HR, because that seems to be an issue. Maybe Definitely you'll keep those duties for the next three years. We'll discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm going to make good common sense decisions. Yeah. <laughs> With, with Terry's, with uh, I mean, he's on board with uh, 911, and I s spoke with several people across the county, and the consensus was that uh, 911 belongs with the sheriff's office. With all the other emergency manager boards and stuff that we do have, I talked to them, and, and I, I didn't have anybody say that they, you know, that they they didn't feel that it wouldn't be there. Um, and when like in the, concurring with what you just said too that it's not cut in stone that if uh, and Terry so we, we talked about that too that if you know we, we can at budget time we want to look at it again or we wanna, I don't see us going back but if we do it's still he'll, he'll work with us and what mm -hmm. we want to do well and there's no one way that any counties do it there's um, there's all there's a variation the of it. Are so different. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it, it has to do with budget, has to do with population, has to do with a lot of factors. In 53 counties, there's probably 53 different ways to do certain things. But yep. mm -hmm. budgetarily, the way I see it, it 
the way Carmen even explained it, I mean, makes it pretty nice and smooth till next budget season. Right. Um, operational, though, is the only thing that I'd, you know, be concerned about. Yeah. As, I, long, as long as it works, I guess. You know, I, I could see the, the double duty with the auditor and the EM for, you know, nine months, but election seasons and different other seasons that could be that could be too much right. yeah we'll the, see. the day to day operations of an auditor's office and then incorporating uh, what is due to the state every month you have a calendar that you have to nope monthly you have duties that uh, well, you have they duties send you but quarterly reports are Right, but what I'm saying is you get an auditor's calendar for the year mm -hmm. from the state, and there's different statutes that are due every mm -hmm. month. I think that with that and then also with, you know, trying to focus on updating the software, which has already been approved, that we need to look into, and then mm -hmm. trying to update our HR, trying to incorporate another position into the auditor's office, uh, it's, I'm going to say it's going to be nearly impossible. Well, we'll see. The oh. thing is... It'll give me a chance to look at, okay, is this even possible? Can we discuss this? Then at least we can look and see. We're not rushing something. We mm -hmm. want to do what's best for the county. Mm -hmm. And to me right now, yeah, then we don't have to hire anybody. We can just look at it. We have some time. One thing, too, is like the, I mean, a lot of things we looked at, 911 is the focus on the EM that just kind of sitting over there. You know, I mean, that's an important job. And it is a very important job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it needs to be addressed, too. I mean, that's, so, I mean, it's, it's either that or, you know, the other thought was, you know, leave it as is. Well, I got to kind of agree or or agree with Travis. I don't want to rush into this. I want to try and make it as, as uh, smooth as we can. Um, and right now, it sounds like moving the 911 in the sheriff's department is pretty much agreeable. Our uh, voted in auditor sounds like she, she because it is a she, was willing to hang on to the emergency management for now. And at you take office when April first. April first. Yeah. So you're so saying this would be a temporary. If she feels change. at that point it's too much of a burden, we could even after that point look at something and by then we'll also know how the 911 is working in the sheriff's department okay. so i think for now i'd be okay with just moving forward in that with that method for now yeah i still we, we want, can I still always want change to, it yeah i still want to see from the sheriff's department how right. he plans mm -hmm. on incorporating it and right making sure it, and you know, not that I'm trying to micromanage Terry by any means, but we just need to make sure that that it works. That right. it works, and that those budgetary things are handled properly. Yep, and that's kind of the point I'm getting at is because maybe in six months from now we'll be hiring a 911 emergency management person. Because so, Carmen, that's what you're saying. You'd like to keep it temporarily yeah, until you take office, until we can see how this to works. Train, to get them trained to see how that's going to work. When I get in, we'll see. So we'll see about the EM. But like you said, maybe it's not going to work. Maybe that's what we'll do. But we have time. We don't have to rush it. Mm -hmm. I know so. what Terry had mentioned, too, that Shelly and you probably know more of them, but I don't know all the names over there, but they go by the three-person process. They keep all their, yeah, yeah. their budgeting in order, and they've, had the, they've already had planned on you know, how they, you know, this so numbers are, are by state law where they got to go. Mm -hmm. Do we need something official here, noting that we'll move nine nine one one into the sheriff's department for? I'm not prepared to make a decision on that yeah. without okay. information from. Yeah, I want a proposal from Terry on how he yeah. plans to do it. Okay. 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 Anything else on that position? Otherwise, I got a question or two for Todd since he walked in. Um. We can throw a bunch of it at Todd now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we... First thing that comes to mind, uh, we talked a little bit earlier on uh, Manhaven lots. Yeah. 
Um, did Cindy talk to, talk to you at all yes. today? Okay. If you Cindy can. and I spoke about this. I've also spoke with the gentleman who's interested in them. Um, what we've got to do is we've got to go back and figure out who was the actual last owner. Which is going to be <coughs> it's going to take some time to go through because the last record, I, if I'm remembering correctly, it would have been around 1927 that it may have been in the bank's name. There was possibly a foreclosure, possibly a sign over. We kind of need to figure that out. And then from there, obviously no taxes have been paid, then we can go through the tax foreclosure proceeding. Or if we can figure out what the tax is, now if we go back to, and I'm just shooting from 1927, <laughs> that's a lot of accumulated tax. I don't think anybody would want to come in and buy the tax certificate if that's all added up with interest and everything because we're talking over a million dollars. I'm a wild guess in my imperfect math, math skills. Um, what we need to do is figure out, okay, is there an entity? Because let's say it's a bank that's now owned by Wells Fargo. Technically, they would still have that interest. Of course, they'd still be back taxes. The commission can decide, okay, to get it back on the tax rolls, we'll waive you know, taxes from 1927 to 2017 or something. But I, I'm just throwing it out. Basically, you as the commission can decide what you want to do with the taxes that would be owed on that property, and then we can proceed from there. And uh, Cindy told us that she went back as far as 1985. That's as far as our records go, I think, on the taxes. And there had these two lots had not had any. Um, they weren't in there. They were, their taxes weren't assessed. Yeah, they're, that's they're, not saying they weren't assessed before. And who knows? But what, I, what I'm thinking is, is once we get back to the ownership records through the recorder's office, we just have to make sure that we have. There isn't somebody who still has an interest. Option two. Just declare it delinquent taxes and go through the normal tax set. But interest of fairness, I kind of like to find out if it's something that's way back when, if there is somebody who actually could be, yeah, and this is the, the drawing of it. Um, you know, the city of Manhaven. Um, Would have been unorganized in the 50s, yeah. essentially. It essentially doesn't exist except in the memories of the collective memory of the county. Who knows? Some mystery writer might come up with a cool story. Yeah. I'd read it. Yeah, and I mean, like I said earlier, it's 90 some years of the time have passed. And there's no brownstone there. There's yeah, there's, there's nothing there. There's nothing but the um, who knows in the 50s when the government did certain things, it could have been. Repossessed or who knows? I'm, right. I'm, there's a lot of things. Check to make sure this hasn't went to some other governmental interest, or if it went to some interest that would not be taxable. Uh, the third option is something we should look at long term. Is since Manhaven has been abandoned, um, there's a lot of steps, but we can take it to remove Manhaven. I don't know if it's necessary. It's not hurting anybody as it is. What about people that do own lots? Yeah, there's people right. that own lots based on that description. And they have so. to have input, but mm -hmm. it, for all practical purposes, it doesn't meet the definition of a town. Correct. Or city, excuse me. Because uh, all of, even, even Manhaven, by law, is a town. Fargo is a town. We don't have village, town, city designations anywhere in North Dakota or other states do have such designations. Yeah, and I don't think there's been any vacations on it, so technically the roads are still right away. Yeah. So, so like, there could be a process, depending on how this goes, that we would vacate the roads and half of the road would go to each side of whoever owns it. Or if uh, there is no but it's platted. They're platted. They're platted. Yeah. Inside the, 
But one, of the, one of the subjects that came up in the discussion is, well, it's landlocked. Somebody owns land all the way around. Well, you can't have landlocked. Even if we were looking at um, Manhaven being one whole section, the lot in the middle has a right of easement to get to their property. You can't force everybody to become helicopter pilots. Okay. Even across private property? Exactly. Because yeah. that's the argument they have now. Yeah, well, they have to have access to their property, reasonable access. Yeah. You can't deny someone access. Right. right. Well, I know that they got it. They got the, the fence locked and the road locked. And, I mean, well, technically, it's a plot of the street. You shouldn't be able to deny access. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's another like Thompson Lane that comes from Pig City that goes down that way too and goes into that across, you know, and across the quarter of law, or southern quarter of the land that gets to the town. Yeah. Well, it's been over 40 years since That'll I've been near Manhattan. That'll I spent a lot of time down there because I fenced it all up two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That could be an issue down the road. But for yeah. now, it's these two lots and, you know. What we need to do at this point is we need to find if there is any remainder interest that still survives. <coughs> I'm willing to bet 10 to 1 odds that there is no surviving legit ownership. But political subdivision, we have to go that extra mile to make sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My advice is let's not just put it up on a tax sale now, let's get into that. Uh, I've been slammed with trials and blizzards and like everyone else here, so uh, the, the criminal trial comes before searching historic records even though I love the history. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the question I had for Todd. Is it landfill else? lease? The, oh, landfill yeah. lease. So here, Let's ask him about that real quick. There's a gentleman quick. that, um, so I, I haven't had a chance to really search deep for the signed copy, but this was the lease that was sent to him and the letter. Now he's um, getting out of the uh, beef, beef business beef, yeah. and wants to see if he could. Uh, he does not want to lease that property this year. Right. But has an interested but party. has an interested party that's willing to take over his lease until it ends at the end of 2023. Okay. Um, like I said, I'll do some more research and find the copy that's been signed by him as well as us. We used to do it annually, and then we did a three-year lease on this last one, and he wants to relinquish before the end of the third term. And yeah, the question is, do we have to just go ahead and automatically put it up for bid, or can we allow this interested party to take over the lease? It's legal to allow somebody to assume the lease. It's no different than in private business where companies have changes. In, so XYZ Corp is now EBC Corp. They could do that. Mm -hmm. This, this is a lease that's going that long. He's still legally bound, and then it would be up to the commission on whether or not they are going to permit the uh, taking over the lease, because uh, this isn't a subletting. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be substitution of, of a lessee. And we would assume the same payment. Yeah. And then if we allowed that for lack of a better term, sublease to become the leasee, then we would just advertise it, um, say, fourth quarter in 23. Yeah. And if you allow the new substituted lessee to fill out the terms of the original lease, that's perfectly legal. But then when that lease expires, then we have to go through the advertising and all that. Okay. That was kind of our legal question. Mm -hmm. Could we? And if we could, then what do we do? And it sounds like if there is an interested party and they're willing to fulfill the same payment contractually, we could yeah. we could move it over for the one year and then do our normal yeah, bidding I've process. This, I've done this when I've been with other counties where we have a father and son farming team, dad started, now dad's retiring and uh, committing the crime of child abuse by turning the farm over to the kid. <laughs> the legal child abuse, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, 
is there a possible another option of saying we can we terminate the lease and then put it out for bids again we could okay i just wanted to know yeah. Yeah. Okay. that's a good question um, yes if he's no longer willing to fulfill we could do a termination it'd be if the other guy the second party doesn't want to agree to the terms that's what we have to do yeah there is a portion in here that states about landlord terminating so the well, we'll landlord can that. terminate it instead of substitute. There's something about then the tenant would be entitled yeah. to the year's rent, land preparation, and CD costs. Yeah. We could waive that as a commission. Oh. I'd want to see the but, signed copy because yeah. I don't know if this is a draft, if this was part of the negotiations, or if this is right. the exact wording of the final signed copy. So with just a cop unsigned copy of what was proposed at one time, whether Cindy was going to try to locate the, yeah. or Cammy, not Cindy, Cammy. Cammy. Mm -hmm. Too many similar names. <laughs> the nice thing is that he came to us now in January because there's plenty of time because yeah. this is a uh, cropland, pasture land, hay land, so we got, we got time. When does the three year expire? End, end of 23. Oh, okay. So this is the final year. year so. yeah. It's the final year. Which is not a bad thing. Switching it in the middle of it doesn't make sense. Well, I like the example I gave. If we have a father son and we <coughs> farm over the kids, it would be unreasonable to say, no, you can't have it because your John, not John Jr., is the one who signed the contract. We are not harmed in any way by the new person taking over. That would be unreasonable to withhold the consent to substitute. And while it's not a guarantee we get sued and lose, it's a guarantee that we now have an unknown. There's enough unknowns. I don't want to leave the county into anything more unknown than we already have to. Okay. Anything else for Todd? I think that was it. Right. Okay. I think that's all we have on our agenda. So we'll see everybody in a couple weeks. Meeting adjourned. I've been here for a little bit, but I had to I'm supposed to work. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to work. I'll take it with me.